Okay, everybody, let's take it from the top. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Hi ho everybody and welcome back to D Plus Us Weekly, the show where we talk about shows exclusive to Disney Plus. I'm one of your hosts, Griffin Tanel, Griffin D Pad, and with me as always is the wonderful, the amazing Mr. Mitch George. How's it going? I am fan freaking tastic. I hope you're doing well. I hope everyone's staying warm and cozy inside and watching all that Disney Plus Us, because I know at least where I am right now, we are experiencing a Texas low, which means lots of snow, and I am not looking forward to going to shovel after this. Yes, there is a blizzard. So if Mitch cuts out at all during this episode, um, there's just a ton of snow falling on top of him at the exact moment that that happens. He is covered in snow and it's becoming a snowman. Hole in ceiling. I'm buried up to my neck. It's not a pleasant sight. So now let's talk about a uh, episode of the show that takes it entirely, in Me- almost entirely, in Mexico, where it's extremely warm. <laughs> if um, only. Yeah, we're talking about National Treasure Edge of History, folks. Remember, we talk about this every week. And we go in full spoilers, have a great time. But before we jump into it, remember to check us out on YouTube and TikTok, where we're putting up breakouts of both the main episodes as well as the weekly episodes. Kind of having a good time over there. On TikTok, but also YouTube is our big push right now. Uh, we have everything in full video now. We're doing reactions to content. We do have reactions up for the Mandalorian Season 3 trailer. And we will be putting up our next episode soon, as soon as it gets recorded. <laughs> you really need to reach out to our guest. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's our big push right now. Video is something that's super important to us, something that we really love doing. So please go and check us out. If you're listening to the podcast, there is a link in the description, and there is a link on all of our social media feeds as well. All that out of the way, let's jump into talking about Episode 8 of National Treasure Edge of History, Prison Break. Which I want to start with with the title first off, because they really just named it Prison Break. They did, they leaned into it, we expected it, and it was... More or less exactly what I expected. Say, not today. only did we expect it, we predicted almost the entire episode. <laughs> Didn't predict the dad breaking out because at the, like the, that whole thing, but we'll we'll get there. Yeah, we'll we didn't there. predict that, and we didn't predict um, Orin taking off. But everything else we predicted. Um, now nah, we uh, let me give y'all with the um, the quick synopsis before we spoil too much more of this. It's a matter of life and death when Jess enlists her friend's help with an impossible heist. Um, Yeah, this episode was fine. That's the way to summarize this whole series to this point is it's it's fine. I feel like this is the first episode that I haven't had like strong feelings about. Yeah, there really wasn't a lot here. Honestly, it was a fairly like. Nothing really happened. We got some progress on the Liam and Nanny or nurse situation. We got the, a, a bit of the FBI stuff, but say, really this like... did just focus. Like this was Jess and her dad. This entirely. gave us some good character moments. And I do think we got some character growth. Like, yeah, for Jess, especially for Warren. Um, and I would tell you, Ethan and Tasha to some extent. There was a little, there was that spark between Orin and Tasha too. I think it was more of, hey, let's set up where these characters are going to be next episode. Um, this kind of felt like the episode that was needed to like, okay, let's bring the FBI in now to the actual main plot. Time for the it. FBI to crack down in the way that they have to do because it's a TV show and we need to have some sort of progress for them. And of course, they're the FBI, so they've been tracking them this entire time. They are a group of dumb kids and the dumb kids made dumb mistakes and now are getting caught for it. Yeah, exactly. I, um, I'm interested, I'm definitely interested to see where, you know, this stuff goes. I think the FBI angle has been the most interesting part of the show last week and this week to me, but Uh, yeah, I mean, I hope we get more of it. I mean, we know we're going to get more of it. The FBI is going to do this whole thing where we brought you guys into custody because we wanted to make sure you were safe. Tell us what's actually going on. We're the good guys, blah, blah, rah, rah. Here's the FBI doing FBI things. But at the end of the day, like we know that this is all fiction and that police and law enforcement would not act in this way. And that these kids would probably remain in prison for a very long time. And the way that it is going to um, humanize the way law enforcement acts in a situation like this is going to be a little disappointing to have to recap over the next couple of weeks, but it is the way it is. And 
It's um, kind of what we expected. Oh, I mean, the first episode had yeah. her freaking out about being a uh, FBI puzzle solver. I made a whole TikTok about how I couldn't remember the name, and I still can't remember the name. <laughs> the name of what? Uh, the cryptologist. Agent? There we go. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I did remember it. Character growth. I'm doing well. Griffin remembering things. <laughs> nah. Um, here's another fun one for you. Um, they totally use the word algorithms completely wrong in this <laughs> show. <laughs> How do you feel, bitch? Uh, at, least it w- at least it was a command line tool and it wasn't like... I don't know. It made it look hackery even though it really wasn't. Which, yeah, it was... Whatever, it's fine. It's TV. Like, I'm, it's I'm fun. I just love to point it out every time it happens. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what we do because we're nerds like that. Mm-hmm. I think um, one of the cooler scenes for me on this one, besides the whole conversation in the hotel, which I did really love, of them figuring out yeah. and being like, nope, I'm out. But also, here's how you do it. Um, yeah. I think my favorite scene of this one was Oren talking to the FBI agent. Of him, like, totally covering her friends. She knows what's up. She absolutely knows. Like, well, She doesn't know the details, but she knows. She knows Hunter he's lying BS. out of his ass, and they're going to get, like, um, Tasha and Ethan are going to get thrown in a, a jail cell with Oren to start the next episode, and it's going to be a whole thing of, like, hey, how'd you end up here? Yeah, I didn't tell her anything, but she knew everything kind of situation. And they're going to inevitably let them know everything that's going on with Jess and with um, Crypto Lady, whose name I'm forgetting because I watched this like three hours ago. And that's how forgetful (laughs) the show can be. Yeah, Billy. Yeah, I I don't know where it's going at this point. Like, Billy has all the answers. I guess she needs Jess in case there's any puzzles they can't solve on their own. It's going down the rabbit hole that I entirely expected it to looking back at the plot of the first of the, the two national treasure films of yeah, bad guy is going to kidnap the good guy and get the good guy to solve the treasure. Otherwise she's going to kill someone important to the good guy in this case, her dad. So Mm -hmm. I guess we did have a, all right. We did have an interesting tidbit there about Salazar. Salazar is an organization organization. It's multiple people. It's not one person. I mean, Billy is Salazar, right? I mean, yeah. Like, we predicted it last week of Billy is Salazar, but it could have been another yeah. person while they were doing it, and that's the person who killed her brother. Uh, shout out to scraggly hair, gray haired man who's been creeping them for the last month, uh, unceremoniously just shot in the chest. Yeah, it just shows up, and, and immediately and, dies. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm here to tell you everything that you need to know. Here's everything you need to know. Okay, I told it. Now what? Oh, crap. Plot. Hit him in the chest. Done. Yeah, like three lines and then dead. Like, here's all the character context you needed for me, and now I'm no longer needed and totally expendable. Goodbye. Bam. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, we're getting to that end point of National Treasure. This is like that lull before getting into the big final. A climax. Let's solve these, solve these puzzles, and then the final run away from the bad guys into the hands of the good guys. Which and is really hide awesome everything directive. from the FBI so you can make some money off the, the, the end of this treasure hunt or whatever. Mm-hmm. I still think that this ends with um, Jess doing some sort of cryptology thing for the FBI. Or at least have an offer or something. I, I don't know how it's going to work. Or citizenship, ah. because that's the way these TV shows like to work for some reason. Well, that's absolutely not how it works. <laughs> No, it'll be it'll be something along that lines. Wrap it up with a bow. Characters are in a good spot because then if they want to pick it up for a season two, which at this point nobody's talking about it, the show is not getting a season two. At least if I were a betting man today, I'd say it's not going to get. Oh a season yeah, two. we're one of the only people talking about this show, and even us, like hey, we've been pretty okay. high on it. We do numbers. Yeah, we've been we've been we've been pretty high on the show up until this week. I feel. I, I feel like we we knew what to expect coming into this, and that's. Not we weren't expecting a masterpiece in television. We were expecting Disney Channel original movie levels of national treasure ness. And I still think that they've by and large fulfilled that initial assessment that I had of the series. I wasn't expecting this to blow my socks off the way the first few episodes of Bad Batch season two have, which we'll talk about in I think there's like 20 episodes in that season. So we'll talk about that in like a month and a half. Yeah, when that's an whatever that ends up being. Yeah. Now, let's not think of like but, uh, with yeah. this episode in particular. I feel like it's great within the whole of the show. Yeah. And like that's the thing that's kind of hard to really grasp when you talk about the stuff week to week. Is that this is a whole show. This is just one part of the overarching story. It's why it's hard to judge like comic books off a single issue. Yeah. That that's what we have here, and 
you know, it's a bit of a lull, but it's that lull before the, uh, the big climax at the end of the film. Yeah, and I, I hope it hits because, like, this episode gave you moments where you were meant to care about these characters that we've been introduced to over the last two months, eight episodes, whatever, or seven episodes, uh, whatever it, it's been to this point. And you do, but you also don't. Like, so a bit of a tangent, my wife and I have been binging The White Lotus. Great show. The HBO show. Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. Uh, and that show does a lot in much less time than this show has of making you both care for and villainize multiple characters within the show. And there was one, like we were, we were binging the end of season one. I'm not going to spoil anything for anyone here, but like there was one moment in one of the episodes where I was cowering under a blanket because it was so cringe, like the way that it was being presented, but it was cringe because you care about characters in the scene and you also dislike characters in the scene and a confrontation there is something that makes your skin crawl. And this show could have, I'm not saying this show could have been to the same effect of White Lotus, but I want to feel that sort of visceral reaction when I'm investing time into a multimedia property, whether that be a game, a show, movie, a comic, whatever it ends up being, a book. And, and I've had show... that reaction from a lot of things, and I did not expect that from the show, but I also am kind of let down that we haven't had anything to that extent with this show, given what we are getting from other production studios at this point. I feel like the show has come close a couple of times though. Like they've definitely had some really, really great moments with these characters. And I do genuinely care about these characters and where they're going to end up by the end of the show, except for Billy. Um, but you're not yeah. supposed to. Billy's the villain. Um, yeah. But where's it going with this? Yeah. People, I do actually care about them. It's just missing that tiny little bit that could make it, so much better but also it yeah it's national treasure we weren't expecting that yeah like it gets close in a couple of times because you hope when you have 10 hours or whatever it is the the total final runtime of this season is going to be you have all this time to spend with these characters you don't get in film you have time to build these relationships out you have time to make you care about these characters and they get so close griffin so close and then they go full Riverdale with their explanation of anything. <laughs> and I'm immediately pulled out of it because this is the Riverdaleification of national treasure in good ways in terms of some of those character moments. And in all of the worst days, except for getting into like the occult weird magic body. Which would frankly make way more sense in national treasure. Later seasons. That stuff would make way more sense in national treasure. <laughs> Than Riverdale, I agree. Like, if they just pull in Indiana Jones and, like, the last 15, 20 minutes are drastically it. different than the rest of the movie. They go full, they go full Uncharted 2, where it's, oh, by the way, everyone's a monster now. Have fun. Or the first Uncharted, where it's, like, just zombies. Or oh, yeah, there was also the zombies in the first one. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Like, I, I would love a weird twist at the end of this series. I don't expect that we're going I to do, see we're that. Not, we're not day, getting it's, that. It's National Treasure. Give me some puzzles. That was the thing that I was missing in this episode. There weren't any puzzles. The stakes were there in terms of the prison break, but there wasn't any problem solving. It was dad already knew a way out of the, out of the prison. Their initial route out was closed off, but he had a hole in a wall a la Shawshank Redemption, which I mean, duh, but also could it have been something a little more original? I liked the idea of using the, the, the overflow viaducts or for the water or whatever, that Oren had suggested. I just wish they'd gone more that route and not, hey, this episode's called Prison Break. Guess what? We're doing a prison break. Oh no, the dad's prison break plan failed, so he's gonna die. Oh look, he got not died. Yay! Hey, honestly, I think the thing that really frustrated me with this episode in particular was how they explained the, the puzzle box puzzle. Of Like, I love the idea of it's a map of the sky. It's not of the... Uh, the ground but also yeah. here we are extremely conveniently at the tree where this uh is located but also, also the explanation of like it's an app to look at to map the stars okay what's an app yeah we get it you've been in prison cool but then also like all i have to do is plug in these constellations and it will tell me some random point off the mississippi river even though that's, that's not, not how, how this work. works that's, that's not, not how, how apps work that's not how the sky works the, God damn that it. one. This that was the part where I just had to accept it. Me to no end at times. Mm -hmm. 
At the, but no, honestly, what hurt me on that one, like I didn't, I could pass all of that. I didn't care that the, the app joke was cringy in the worst possible way. But like the stars one, totally fine. It's a pain in the butt to explain. Just look at Moon Knight. Um, <laughs> but what got me was how they I were. I really showing want it. them to confirm. I really want season two of Moon Knight confirmed soon. I really, really I mean, want that show to be. Because it hasn't been officially confirmed, but it's been all but officially confirmed. Oscar Isaac basically leaked it in a TikTok at some point, didn't he? Him and the director. I'm like uh, the, the, in Egypt. Yeah, they're doing season two. No, but no. When you when you show the sky and like they have these kind of frankly ugly graphics for this one, they like did, they went Moon Knight, but they didn't go full Moon Knight. And then it's like, hey, let's CG the sky. Because the other ones they've and done for they, this have been like hokey and dumb, but they're still fun and look good. This was not one of those. This one went too far of just, hey, let's CGI the sky, but also let's turn the lights off on Jess so you really believe that in their head they're looking at the night sky. It's just, also, uh, they're looking up and when they're actually looking down. And it was interesting. A lot of weird, yeah, a lot of weird cinemagraphic choices in this one, too. Like the way things were framed and shot. The slow mo. Why? Why was the whole run across the. the prison yard slow-mo see i was laughing at that because i one of my favorite favorite tropes and stuff like this is unnecessary slow-mo but that like it's moments like that i'm like oh they're going full riverdale with national treasure and it's unfortunate because this hat this show has so much potential this show doesn't this episode didn't need to be three minutes longer so they could slow-mo jazz across the prison yard Honestly, but they did it this episode could have been like half the episode on next week like, this is the first time where I was like, oh, shit, this is 50 minutes. Yeah. Like, every other episode's been like, oh, sweet, this is 50 minutes. This one I was like, oh. Or, oh, oh, it's over. And this one was like, oh, it's over. Mm -hmm. Also, ending in the most predictable way possible. Like, I know we, what we were expecting, and it is National Treasure, but I would love some sort of twist here. As soon as the dad got new shoes, I knew. Same like, trick. you know. Same damn like, trick. Billy's going to do this, like... Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, we're idiots for taking new shoes. It is like, kind of funny, though, how a lot of the stuff came around from the first episode. Like, Oren gets those shoes in the first episode. They have the prison escape room in the first episode. I did really like that. Uh, yeah. yeah, the symmetry there is kind of nice now that I think about it. But also just like, Jess's first instinct should be, did you get new shoes recently? If so, Billy is listening. Like, Yeah, I think the only reason why I can see her not asking that is she found him in the middle of a prison break where everything had gone wrong. There is also that. Yeah. Like that's the reasonable question. Why she didn't ask when they were in the van is beyond me, but yeah, I mean, honestly, anytime anyone gets into a vehicle with them, now that they haven't been with the entire time, it should be, you're stripping down to nothing. We'll turn our, we'll turn around, close our eyes. Here's a new set of clothes. Put these on. Like the dude gets changed, but he keeps wearing the prison shoes. I mean, so they brought him a change of clothes, but not a change of shoes. They're nice like, shoes. Come on! They're real nice shoes. They're not. They're prison loafers. How that dude ran across that yard and didn't lose a shoe is beyond me. Yeah, fair enough. Now, I feel like that's really all we got to talk about this week's episode. Still, still very excited to see how this wraps up. This is just, like I said, the low before the climax. For me, I want to see this wrap up just because I know two weeks after this wraps up, we're getting The Mandalorian Season 3, and that's really all I can look forward to at this point. <laughs> On that but note... also Ant-Man in, like, three weeks? Three weeks, four weeks. Something like that? We got one episode to do before that, and then expect us to do... We should do Ant-Man before... One of the Ant-Man... Or no, we said we were doing something else, didn't we? We said we were going to do Last Jedi, but I think we were doing that going into Mando. Um, this would be going into, it's a whole, we'll thing. figure you'll it out. We'll figure it out. You'll, you'll hear from us soon, probably on last Jedi. We'll do Ant-Man's eventually. Yeah. Keep an eye out for that. We will probably be looking for guests for Ant-Man and we will, like I said, we will be doing an episode about the last Jedi soon because, uh, we like that movie. It's a great movie. It's very fun. I can't wait to have a, a positive conversation about one of my favorite star Wars films of all time. Also, I'm just going to go still... over well with the internet. I'm also still just very much uh, riding that Ryan Johnson high after uh, Glass Onion, still, like, a month later, so... Knives Out was better than Glass Onion, and I'll fight anyone on that. Look, apparently he's got a new action movie coming out tomorrow, so... Or maybe it's a TV show. 
I saw an ad for it earlier today. Anyways, folks, oh. that has been this week's episode. Um, Mitch, where can people find us? At D plus us, Twitter, Instagram, eventually YouTube, TikTok, uh, uh, Vine, um, MySpace, uh, Google Plus. What else exists? There? Google Plus still more. exist. No, God, no. They sh- if you you think Google Plus still exists today, Look, and they shut down Stadia after two years, Google's weird, and you know it. I've got a bridge to sell you. Google is weird, and you know it. That would be the yeah, weird shit that they would no, do. Wherever we can exist, we exist as D plus us. Griffin and I, we have links there in socials. You'll find them if you want to find them. Mm-hmm. And remember, folks, go and check out our YouTube channel. Here we're having a lot of fun. And if you are here, thank you for checking it out. We will be back next week with the next episode of National Treasure. But until then, have a magical day.